so it's more lightweight time got some parts finally found m3 bumper or m sort bumper got the right diffuser because it's got the the space for two exhausts it's a bit cracked but i can fix that and in here we have uh, like a wishbone kit i'll get it out it's not that interesting yeah so not super interesting but sort of a lower suspension kit tie rods lollipop bushings wishbones that you know come with the bushings which is always good okay so one downside of getting into OEM parts is when they come up for sale you sometimes get tempted and I've been looking at these for a while and sort of had to do it these are genuine phase one sunflowers in really good condition some of them have got a bit of curving but they're much a better condition than uh, the style 24s I've got they're all the same width they're all seven and a half J so these are kind of factory square quite cool they only came on early M3s I can't remember which ones I think it's about 92 to 95 and yeah they're just really rare especially in this condition I personally think they're a lot better looking than the newer sunflower they're called DS2s because these ones have the BMW motor support like embossed in this ring and I don't know, it's hard to explain but they just look so much nicer they're quite lightweight onesies as well because they're only 7.5J I don't think they're as light as the Star 24s but it's it's marginal from factory the M3s had with these wheels had a 235-4017 uh, tyres which is what I'm planning to run so that's quite cool obviously the only downside is uh, these don't have really track tyres on them which is fine because it's nice to have a spare set and these could actually be quite good uh, wet tyres because they've all got proper tread and they're actually all quite new obviously it depends how you do it but road tyres don't always last as well on track but I think if it's wet then I don't know maybe it doesn't wear as, as much here's the sort of surprise but I think you can guess what these are what I meant before with alignment so I've got to fit these these are HST mono pros pretty kind of middle ground good coilover setup for an E36 it's not true coilover because you still use the buckets and springs on the back but it's good enough for me all the adjustability so that's what it's looking like oh yeah I'm not looking forward to this there's a diagnostics tool see if it's an easy sensor to replace and um, if it's not then I'm half tempted to put my M50 back in don't want to be chasing sensors all the time but we'll see but anyway first of all mechanically wishbone kit pretty simple wheel off first different ways you can go about this but if you don't know an E50 wish E56 wishbone is this piece here so then replacing that the lollipop bushing uh, drop link inner and outer tie rods so on either side wishbones are completely off just the hubs left there and the brake line didn't want to take it off um, but it's don't worry it's supported so I've just ran the uh, diagnostic system it's quite good actually so I did it on the driver it's the engine basically and some of these might explain why my uh, emissions were so bad we've got oxygen sensors which are they're fine they won't stop the car running it says I've got a mechanical jam on Vanos. Don't know what that is. I know what Vanos is, but I'm pretty sure it's working when I drove the car. Speed signal, that's fine. Mass airflow sensor. Just throwing code. I think the reason why my start issue, I think it's down to these two. So it's saying EWS signal de defective, which maybe the conversion to manual might have had something to do with that but but as I thought crankshaft sensor has gone as well that's annoying anyway at least we found out okay let's try something hopefully easy well, unpainted dirty you know non-M bumper I know it's blue but and the lighting's not so good but 
that diffuser look makes such a difference. It's not on properly yet as well, but oh, wow. Been waiting a while for one of these and finally I got one. It came off a, what's it, a Storio Blue M3. It does have a slight crack in it, but right, that can be repaired. Especially because I'm, I don't mind because I'm going to the trouble of painting it anyway, so why not repair it, but wow. Much more aggressive now, it needs to be fitted properly. I'm getting that. Right, so it's another day. I can't remember where I got to on this. Progress is coming along. Sport rear bumper is on. Just need sanding and fixing and painting. Oh, seats are in. Uh, these are always fiddly and I didn't film it. Basically, I got some wide amounts. If you saw my last video, my driftwood ones were too narrow. I got these ones, which look quite cool. You know, it's a race car when it says motorsport on it. Not really. But they were off eBay and I think I'll find a link if you're interested, but they were like wide mounts. Um, they just fit. They do look good though, they're worth it. Yeah, lots of toing and froing with these mounts. I need to put the cushions on. There we go. It's really nice to have them matching. Um, it's the old style logo where you've got the seat name at the top, not there. See, as you know, people normally mount these at this sort of angle quite steep uh, to the where the rear seat is mount. It's messy in here, but um, yeah, I need a cage, so, or a rear cage or harness for at least, so they sit sort of more level. Um, but I'm not driving it anytime soon. The mounts are good, to be fair. They put you right near the transmission tunnel, which is what most E36 mounts try and do, but they don't always do. Nice and level, I'm comfortable. So back with E36. And, comes to the conclusion, this needs to come out, and this needs to go in. It's not obvious, but there's an M50 buried in that. Reasons are, I don't trust this uh, M52, had a lot of issues with it. I know that this M50 is good, I've got gaskets for it. It threw codes in the last video, the Vanos, and I still want to be throwing sensors at it if I've got a decent engine here. So. And I want to clean up a few things in the engine bay and make it pretty, make it serviceable and not too dirty. Anyway, I'll get to it. Yeah, so I'm not going to show the whole engine removal because I've actually done a video on that in real detail if you need it. So go and look at that. But uh, just in stages, I like to get the front complete front end off so you can pull the motor rather than lift and pull. Well, that's it out. I was lazy and didn't disconnect with it dry shaft or prop shaft <laughs> but uh, I can do that now the next problem is I don't have any room that helps but kind of tight here so I have to rotate anyway it's not too bad in here apart from the in terms of dirt in terms of the oil apart from the subframe the steering rack it's actually quite presentable and we're out of flat surface or um help. This is how you move it. The trailer. Swing the lift around sideways. Hill. And a quad bike. Let's see if it toes out. Start trip start anyway. Right, look it. Follow the drive. Trailers out. I'll show you a picture. Just needed someone to stand on the front. Uh, gave it a bit of traction. So it's another day. I should have done this in summer because it's quite muddy. But anyway, 
that's the M52 up. Going to be cleaning the engine bay. Um, that's the M52, it sort of fell over, but that's a scrap engine to me. So I'm just going to put some degreaser down and then get a pressure washer. I've been rushing filming this because I'm in a rush. Anyway, you saw the before. This is the after. Um, it's come out quite well, not perfect. Uh, the steering column's definitely a lot better. And uh, the steering rack is still a bit black and stuff, but it's much better. The main thing is the oil and mess is gone, so it'll be much nicer working on it when I'm underneath it from now on. So this is the next challenge. This is, it's quite tightly packed in there, but there's an M50. It needs to come out. I've got it in with a lift, so surely I can get it out with a lift. Yeah, the main thing is that the engine still turns over. I think it's been about a year since I last started it, so it's dry in here anyway, but we'll see. Well, that's the M50 out. It wasn't actually that bad. If you lift it off like a one point, it sort of pivots and pulls its way out. It wasn't didn't actually break anything inside. So now I'm going to put it on the stand, clean it, and then regasket it. This should be fun. So that's it on the stand. I'm going to degrease it where I can. I don't really want to mess with this side. Regasket what I've got. So I've got inner and outer rocker cover gaskets, uh, crank shaft both sides, and just like an oil service gearbox, uh, diff, ATF, um, all the big ones really. Apart from the head gasket, which is fine. Obviously, insane not to uh, do a clutch when the clutch is out. Gearbox is off rather. Seen worse, but. I'll have a look. Obviously, this is all rusty as well, the pressure plate, but I'm also interested to see. I was really nervous about this part because if the engine seized, it's all a no go, but. It's absolutely fine. <laughs> which I remember is a 22 mil. Okay, so I've been slacking filming this because it's just annoying, but the M50 has a gearbox now. I put a new oil pan gasket on the M50, uh, new engine mount because the one I had was cracked from my crash. Engine still turns over so everything works. It has a new clutch, pressure plate, and now I've got to get it down there. 